You're watching the Samsung Galaxy M52 5G disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Now we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the plastic back plate. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and prying it off. There are 15 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, we need to disconnect the flex cable for the fingerprint reader. Next, we're going to place our plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and we're going to run it along the edges and pop off the catches. The back housing itself is also made of plastic. There's an NFC antenna located in the center, as well as some graphite film over here to help transfer heat. There are also numerous antenna flex cables around the back housing. On the other side, we can see the speaker assembly, as well as some rubber gaskets, and the fingerprint reader located on the side. We can also see the rest of the graphite film over here underneath the NFC antenna. Now the battery cable needs to be disconnected. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. This flex cable connects the main board to the sub board. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right corner of the board, which need to be popped off and disconnected. Next, we can disconnect the front-facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw holding on the main board, which needs to be removed. Now the board can be lifted up and removed. The 64 megapixel main lens is located on top, followed by the 12 megapixel ultra-wide lens and the 5 megapixel macro lens below that. The LED flash is located right here, and there are some rubber gaskets around the connectors. The camera connectors are located on the back side, and those can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a proximity sensor on top, as well as a secondary microphone next to it. The SIM card and memory card reader is located right here, and there's a graphite pad on top of the back shield. Once we peel back the graphite pad, we can see a thermal pad which sits on top of the processor, as well as a small thermal pad which sits on top of this chip. The other two ends of the coaxial cable need to be disconnected. Next, the screen cable needs to be disconnected. There's a single Phillips screw holding on the subboard, which needs to be removed. Once that screw is removed, we can lift up and remove the subboard. The charger port is located here, and there's a rubber gasket around this connector. On the other side, we can see the primary microphone located here. If you needed to replace the screen, you would need to remove the back plate, as well as the screws and the back housing, and then you would have access to the screen cable, which is located on the bottom corner. You would disconnect the screen cable, apply heat to the front of the phone where the screen is, so you can loosen up the adhesive underneath. You would pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply your new screen, making sure you run your cable through the opening in the midframe, and then you would reassemble your phone. In order to remove the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help you pry it off, so we are going to need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some around the edges of the battery, and let it sit there for about a minute, so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see a protective film over a copper heat pipe. Here is a better look at the copper heat pipe, which is in between the battery and the screen, and it runs along underneath where the processor is on the board. Moving on, the vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, and it's held down with some adhesive. The flex cable for the volume key is located here, and it's also held down with some adhesive. So if you wanted to remove that, you would have to gently pry it off. And the earpiece speaker is located on top, and that's also held down with some adhesive. There are also two liquid damage indicators, which are these white stickers. One is located by the charger port, and the other is located underneath the SIM reader. So as far as repairability goes, I give this phone an 8.5 out of 10. It's not too difficult to pry the backplate off, and there aren't too many components to remove to gain access to the screen cable. 
so making screen replacements shouldn't be too difficult. However, when it comes to removing the battery, it does require the use of some isopropyl alcohol. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.